Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be continuing on with a bunch of the small jobs, putting that final spit and polish on the machine. So we're gonna start off with something I've been wanting to do for several weeks now, and that's get the electronics properly mounted up inside an enclosure. Now you could totally mount your electronics inside the machine if you wanted to. I've opted to go with a separate enclosure that I'll be putting underneath the machine. So I was actually gonna build a box for this using 2020 aluminum extrusion and the aluminum sheet. But by the time I priced up the cost of materials and the cost of time, it was actually better for me to purchase a ready-made steel enclosure. Um, and I'm glad I did, because this is much nicer than what I would have made, except for maybe the color. Um, so I'm not gonna be going over how to wire everything up again. That was covered in episode, episode four, I believe. And it's also covered in the build guide. So what we're gonna be doing is basically just doing the layout and mounting all the components in here so that they're nice and secure and safe. Also, while I'm telling you things, I've finished up the build guide for the smaller version of this laser cutter, the Y400, and that's available now over on my website. Apologies for the delay, I know a couple of you were waiting for that to come out. Anywho, I'll start by laying out the components where I think I need them. I wanna keep all the mains voltage components in one area and the drivers and stuff over the other side. So I'll start by putting the main power socket in this left lower side. This enclosure has a separate mounting panel which I can screw all the components down to. It makes sense to mount the switches and stuff at this point too. I'm doing a mains emergency off switch, separate power switches for the control board and laser power supply, and a couple for extra things like the LEDs and the red laser pointer sight when that arrives. I'm gonna add a bunch of connectors so that I can just plug things in like the stepper motors and the limit switches. It should make maintenance and future proofing quite a bit easier. Now I can go through and start adding the wiring back in.
and that pretty much wraps up getting all the wiring stowed away. You probably saw I added a couple of extra plugs and that's for the things like the LEDs, which I will tackle right now. The LEDs look way more purple on camera for some reason, but hey, I dig it. I wanted to talk briefly about the laser tube setup. I'm still using an old 50 watt tube because it's still got life left in it, but this was designed to handle a much larger tube, and it does that by using an extension box. Now these are super common, and you see them all the time on higher powered smaller machines, because it's often not an effective use of materials to make the whole machine larger, just to accommodate one slightly larger component. This one here is sized for the Ricky W175 to 90 watt laser. And if you want to go larger than that, the frame would extend just a little bit past the pipes. And I know what you're thinking. Well, why not run the laser down the long side of the machine and then it wouldn't stick out. And you totally could do that. A couple of options would be to add a fourth mirror to bounce the beam one more time or change the gantry arm to span the long side. But bear in mind, you will be adding more complexity and a bit more cost. All right, so moving on. Some of you would have noticed the extra bracing on the lid that's in the documentation, but not on my machine. Well, the pivot connectors have just arrived, so let's add them in now. I don't think the bracing is strictly necessary, but it does help with the small amount of flex that's present in a lid of this size. These pivots fasten to the end of the T-slot, so I need to add an M6 thread. Another super cool feature is apparently they don't fit M6 screws, so I'll crack out my machinist lathe and uh, sort that out real quick. They don't need to be in any exact position because you can just slide across until the brace is tight and then fasten it down. Now with the extra weight, I need to adjust the gas strut geometry to give me a bit more uh, staying power. And I'll do that by moving the bottom bracket about an inch in towards the rear. I've also heard on good authority that it's standard practice to have the gas struts mounted up the other way, so I'll flip them around as well. The lid's all sorted out and I think that's all the major components covered. So now, if you don't mind, my client work's been backing up, so I thought I may as well kill two stones with one bird here, as I know you probably want to see the laser cutter actually functioning. So this is a small job doing Christmas decorations for an end of year corporate event, Nothing special, just a quick raster engraving and a cutout, and I'm using some nice 3mm thick bamboo plywood. It always takes a while to hone in on the best settings, so I'm running everything at a conservative speed and power, but as you can tell, even with an old 50 watt tube, it makes pretty short work of these, and I'm not anywhere close to full speed or power. I'll let this bit play out in real time so you can get an idea. That camera shaking is just from the camera being unstable during those faster moves. Also note how well the extractor is performing. There's no lingering smoke, which is exactly what I want. Let me know if you're interested in learning more about how I make money using my laser cutter, because I think it would make an interesting topic to cover. Um, fair warning though, I do like to tell it how it is, so none of that make $10,000 in a day type hype stuff. And hey, guess what? While I was doing those, 
the red dot laser pointer thingy arrived, so let's stick that on. The mounting bracket slides down over the nozzle and then the laser pointer is secured in the ring with a grub screw. I can then do the fun task of threading the wires back through all the cable chains. The laser pointer runs from 5 volt power which is unfortunate because everything else is running 24 volts. So I added in an extra 5 volt power supply into the enclosure, but you could equally do that with a 24 to 5 volt step down transformer, just whatever floats your goat. So there's nothing high tech happening here. All I need to do is position the laser pointer so that it lands in the same spot as the cutting laser when it's in focus. Now don't be a goose like me, it's much easier to do when you actually fire the laser so that you have something to line up to. This thing totally isn't necessary if you're trying to save some pennies, but it does make it easier to line things up with. And having it on that switch from earlier means that I can just turn it off when the actual laser is running. And with that, that actually is all the major components covered. I think we just finished the build. Well, it's been quite the journey, so thank you for following along. It's been a real pleasure to be able to share this with you, and I hope you found it informative or the very least mildly entertaining. All the documentation is over on my website, so I'll put links to that down below. There will of course be more videos on this and other projects that I have, but in the meantime, you can find me over on Instagram. I try and use that for smaller updates and behind the scenes. So yeah, I'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk over here.